Guardians of the Rift, complete guide with both quick and detailed explanations. Hello, and welcome to the textbook guide for Guardians of the Rift. With our clan challenge this month being runecrafting, I have lived Guardians of the Rift for the last three weeks and figured why not create a guide along with some tips and tricks I've picked up along the way. I myself am a do by learning type of person, so I've done my best to lay out this guide as something you can follow along with while you get your feet wet. As always, the guide has been broken down into sections, so please refer to the timestamps if you wish to skip ahead. For those of you that don't want to sit through an entire guide, or would like to have an idea of what you're doing before watching a guide, I will give you a quick breakdown of a game right now. This way you can jump right into a game and begin gaining some experience while you follow along with the rest of the guide. For those of you who are here for the full guide, understanding the framework of the game will aid in the understanding of the information in the following sections. A quick note. Unlike many games like Wintertod, you cannot enter the room mid-game, so if you want to follow along practically, enter the room as soon as it becomes accessible. Even if you don't intend to participate, you can explore the room while watching the video. Right-click the barrier, hit Select Peak to see how far along the game is, and when available, enter the room. The Rundown Please note this is going to leave out a lot of information, as this is just a quick rundown. The game works by mining, crafting, and runecrafting. Once you enter the room, please take note of the following six things. The guardian in the middle of the room. This is where you will deliver your crafted essence. The pillars surrounding the guardian in the middle, which are the altar entrances. Cell power-up tiles. These tiles are where you drop your cells, which we will cover later. The tables. This is the crafting area near the entrance. The lower level mine on the east side of the map, and the lower level mine on the west side of the map, which is only accessible by portals. You will enter the room, right click the table shown on the screen and select 10 cells. Then walk to the east side of the map and climb down the slope. Watch your chat box and look for an indication of when the next game will start. It will count down. When the game starts and the interface HUD will appear on the screen in the left hand corner. There is a two minute mining preparation round. Mine until 150 fragments or 25 to 30 seconds remaining. Then climb up the slope and head to the table the workbench where you will craft your fragments into essence. Craft your fragments into essence and fill your pouches. Keep your eye on the timer on the HUD. Once the preparation round is completed, the rotations of the altars will start to begin. Each rotation is 18 seconds. You can use the first rotation to finish crafting your fragments into essence and filling your pouches, but you need to be headed towards the entrances of the altar once the second rotation is in effect because you want to make sure you make the first portal to the west mine. Once you're at the altar, craft your essence. If you're going to do combination runes, make sure you use the magic imbue spell, and then return back to the main arena. At this point, you should be keeping a close eye at the HUD or interface for the portal symbol that will tell you where the portal is located as well as the time remaining to reach the portal. It is recommended to craft a guardian using your cell. However, if you don't have much time to reach the portal, you can skip this step. Once you've entered the portal, you will be in the West Mine location. This location offers a unique opportunity because you will get essence opposed to fragments, which is much quicker. Mine, fill your pouches and return back to the main arena. Once you return back to the main arena, you will be placed next to the Great Guardian. Deposit your crafted essence and then find the portal to the altar that you wish to craft at next. When you turn from crafting your runes this time, you will be placed right next to the workbench Head to the bench and craft your fragments into essence. Do not deposit as it will be a waste of time. You can deposit your essence that were already crafted on your way to the next altar. At this point, the remainder of the game is a simple rinse repeat. Portals to the west mine will come every other round. So you will portal, then craft, portal, then craft, portal, then craft, after the initial start. At the end of the game, if there is a portal available with around 85% of the Guardian power left, take the portal and stay there as you will be able to start the next game in the West Mine. Now that you have a brief understanding, let's get into the full guide. Starting with Access. To access the minigame, you will need to have completed the quest Temple of the Eye. You also need 27 rune crafting. You can use the minigame teleport to get there. If not, you can use the DIS fairy ring to the wizard's tower, then go down to the basement where the entrance will be after the quest, or use the amulet of glory to drain our village. Recommendations. It is highly recommended to have at least 56 agility to use the shortcut to the east mine. 
Although it is not required, this will greatly increase your ability to perform the minigame. Agility and Energy The higher the better. You should be fine. During the game you will spend a lot of time stationary and your energy will regenerate. If you are struggling with energy levels, you can consider adding a piece of the graceful outfit to help reduce weight. Next, make sure you are using the best pickaxe available to you. 50 rune crafting is a good bonus for using 3 essence pouches. The rune pouch, if available with lunar magic for your pouch repair using the NPC contact spell. This game will be very tedious and time consuming and you will miss the start of the next game if you need to leave to go and repair your pouches in the abyss. So it is highly recommended to have Lunar Magics and the NPC Contact spell to have your pouches repaired. Gearing and Inventory When you first start, your gear will be similar to that under the early setup shown on the screen. Although, depending on your levels and your progress, some items might not be available to you. First you will need a pickaxe, the best that is available to you. Next, the Prospector outfit for the additional mining experience, with the exception of the body. You'll need Binding Necklaces, and the Varrock armor in the body slot for additional pieces of the fragments to be mined. Then you will need the Graceful Gloves as well as the Graceful Cape. As mentioned earlier, if you are struggling with run energy, you can swap in pieces of the Graceful outfit to maintain your energy, but I doubt this will happen. Once you begin to procure the Runecrafting outfit, save the body for last. And once you obtain the body, put the Varrock armor in your inventory, which we will cover in the next section, and you will want to swap it in while you are mining to add your additional fragment chance. And lastly, with regards to gearing, once you obtain the lantern, it will go in your offhand slot as shown on the screen with the complete outfit and the offhand slot holding the lantern. Now for your inventory. It is highly recommended to do combination rooms, if you have the means to do so. This is the best points and XP per hour. If you are doing combination runes at the elemental altars, slots 1 and 2 of your inventory will hold the runes for your combinations. Below, in slots 5, 6, and 9 and 10, you will hold your essence pouches and Varrock armor once you've obtained the full runecrafting outfit. The lower slots of your inventory will hold additional binding necklaces, your chisel, your rune pouch for NPC contact. As seen on the screen now, in my case I have obtained the colossal pouch, so I've limited my 4 essence pouches to just one. And once you've obtained the lantern, and are using its benefits, which your pouches do not degrade, you can change the steam runes to fire runes, swap out your air runes for water runes, and remove the cosmics, because you'll no longer need to cast NPC contact. You can now use the empty slot in your rune pouch to store runes that you wish to keep during the game, such as deaths and bloods. Before we move on to the next section, here's a bit of general information. As far as worlds go, they're shown on the screen now. I use 420 preferably, and yes I'm serious, this is a skill total world with 1500 and I find that the people in this world tend to be a little bit more serious and do their roles respectively for building guardians and charging the barriers. For rune light plugins, menu entry swapper for shift empty of essence pouches is very important. Also this is just preference but you can use entity hider to not show other players in the world. I find this very less distracting and I always have this turned on. You can also use the Guardians of the Rift plugin in the plugin hub, but I don't use it personally. Next, game information. On the screen now are some game items. These are the items that you will obtain during the game that will be part of the process of completing the minigame. First are the fragments. The Guardian fragments are mined from the Guardians that you see throughout the map on the ground in piles. Next you see the Essence. The essence are what are crafted from the fragments or gotten from the large guardians that are in the west mine that is accessible through the portals. Next are the guardian stones, referred to previously in this as the crafted essence. These are what are crafted at the altars and then brought and deposited to the guardian in the middle. Next you have charged cells in order of strength as well as the uncharged cells. The uncharged cells as we discussed earlier in the guide and you will see later on are picked up at the table when you enter the room. There's 10 of these that can be stacked at one time and they will turn into the charged cells when you use them on specific altars. And one final game item is talismans. When you use an altar occasionally you will receive a talisman to re-enter that altar. So if it's not a rotation where that altar is active you can still enter it. This is very useful for things like fire, death, and blood runes. Unfortunately, I cannot find an image of them on the wiki, but you'll know it when you see it. In the interest of time and limiting unnecessary complexities, on the screen now are charts that can be found on the Guardians of the Rift OSRS wiki. I recommend that you go to the wiki, it's very short, and give some of the charts and different items on there a read. 
Charts will show you things like XP rates per cells, the different types of altars and what cells they'll give you, as well as the different types of guardian stones that are produced. One thing I'd like to cover before we get into the map breakdown, as well as the game breakdown, is the user interface or the heads up display that you will see once the game begins. When the game begins, you will see this come up in the top left hand corner of your screen. You can pause the video now if you want to take a closer look at these, but I will cover each one very quickly right now. In the top right hand, you will see the number of guardians. This is the number of guardians that have been created with the cells. Below that, you will see the portal location and the time remaining. In this example, it is east and there's 17 seconds remaining. Next, you can see the active altar entrances. These are the pictures that will let you know which pillars for the entrances of the altars is currently open. In between the active altar entrance indicators, you will see a timer. This shows you the rotation. As mentioned earlier, this rotation is between 18 and 19 seconds. Then, below that you will see the elemental energy and the catalytic energy. This counts the amount of points you've achieved in each of the respective types. We will cover the points and how the point system works later on in the video. Now, to the map breakdown. The reason I wanted to show the user interface prior to this is because if you would like and you are currently waiting outside the game, enter the game and follow along with this part of the guide. On the screen now is a bird's eye view of the arena, with lines depicting what your start will look like. You will enter the room. Head to the table with the empty cells, select 10, and then proceed to the East Mine, assuming you have 56 agility. Once you enter the East Mine, you will wait until the game begins, and then begin the 2 minute preparation round. The next section will be more specific in terms of exact timing, but with 30 seconds remaining in the preparation round, you will climb back up the slope and follow the green line back to the workbench and begin crafting your fragments into your essence. Next, once you've turned your fragments into a full inventory of essence, gone to an altar, crafted, and returned to the map, you will see that a portal will be available taking you to the West Mind. On the screen now is the locations where the portals will be. As mentioned earlier, the heads up display, or the user interface, will show the location of the portal. So make sure you always keep your camera pointed to the north, or relatively to the north, so you have a general understanding of how to find the portals when they're open. Because this is timed, you will probably find yourself in a hurry to get to the portal and the last thing you want to do is go the wrong way and waste precious time. Now let's talk about where you will land when returning back to the main arena from the altars or the west mine. First, in the south, you see the altar return. Once you've crafted your essence, you will return to this point very close to the workbench. When returning from the west mine, you will be put near the great guardian so you can deposit and then go to your next altar with your full inventory of essence. Your returning to the arena from the two separate locations has a bearing on where you will place your charged cells. When returned to the location after an altar by the workbench, it is easiest for you to use your charged cell creating a guardian. Whereas if you're returning from the west mine and you are still holding a charged cell, it is better to deposit your crafted guardian stones and then place your cell on one of the barriers. After you've placed your cell, respectively, if you're by the workbench, you will then go to the workbench and craft your fragments and then return to deposit your essence from the previous craft and then head to a new altar. Or if you are returning from a portal to the west mine, you will be placed close to the great guardian where you can make your deposit and then return to an altar to craft the essence in your inventory. Please take note of the two guardian piles that you will use to create guardians using your charged cells. One is catalytic and the other is elemental. We'll talk about this a little later in the points section, but it's important to know this because you'll want to use one in certain situations over the other. Once you begin to get a handle on the minigame and you want to be a little bit more of a team player, on your way into the room, you can also pick up one weak cell as well as 10 empty cells before you head to the east mine. This means when you come back to the workbench and head towards the altar after crafting the fragments into essence, you can place a cell on the barriers right away. And lastly, let's take a look at placing your cells on the barriers. This is very important as this will keep the abyssal creatures from not attacking the great guardian and will limit the amount of games that are lost. You want to be a good team player and you want to make sure that you are placing cells on the barriers. In order of strength, seen on the left hand side, if a barrier is at red, that means it's fully charged. Green, second, blue, third, and white means it's been charged in the very beginning by a weak cell. If a cell tile is already at red, do not place your cell on it. Use it on one of the green, blue, or the white ones. Prioritize getting the white ones to the blue color at a minimum so that these barriers have a little bit more strength. To As a new or learning player of Guardians though, do not sacrifice your cycle or your making of the portals by trying to manage or worry about the barriers. There's plenty of experienced players in the mass world who will do this for you. When you get a little bit better, you can start to do this, but you've got to keep in mind the timing and the routine of the earlier rounds to make sure that you're not missing out. 
routine, and the game breakdown. Timing is everything in this mini game. And as we're going to learn in the next routine, you'll notice that it's portal, workbench, portal, workbench, portal, workbench, or workbench, portal, workbench, portal, workbench, portal, depending on if you have a start A or B. Referring to the chart on the screen right now, you will see that the portals come up at a fixed time every time, and the rotations work on timing as well. If you're using the plugin from the plugin hub for the Guardians of the Rift, it will tell you when the next portal is coming. However, you don't need to become reliant on the plugin. After the two minute preparation round, the first rotation begins and it's 18 seconds. When the second rotation begins, and there's only 4 seconds remaining in it, then the first portal will appear. Which means, at that point, with 4 seconds remaining in the second rotation, you need to be on your way to an altar getting ready to craft, leaving yourself enough time to make the portal. This is only relevant for start A, because in start B, you will have already started in the west mine, be full of crafted essence, and be down in the east mine when the game begins and the two minute preparation round is over. Therefore, you will be heading straight to an altar with your essence, and the likelihood of missing the first portal is very, very rare. What's on the screen now might be something that's worth screenshotting and saving for a later date. This is just your routines with start A or start B. Start A being when you come in the room fresh or don't catch the portal back to the west mine at the end of the game, where you'll go down to the east mine, mine 140 to 150 fragments, 25 to 30 seconds remain. You'll workbench, craft, portal, craft, workbench, craft, portal, craft, workbench, craft, portal. Start B is when you start in the west mine after you caught a portal at the end of the last game. You'll fill your inventory and fill your pouches, and you'll go over to the east mine and mine fragments until the game begins. Since the next portal won't come up until the second rotation, you can take a look at the first two altars on the rotation. If they're not very good ones, you can wait around till the second, so you can continue to mine fragments, wait till there's around six seconds left in the first rotation, and then head back up to the main level. A note regarding the third portal, something that's applicable to both of these starts. Stay in the west mine after the third portal. Or, if the power of the Guardian is below 85%, you can go for another craft. Just be mindful of the percentage power. We'll cover the risks and benefits of doing this in the next section. I've laid out this guide as somewhat of a sandwich, which I believe to be the best way to get the information and the understanding across. We covered an overview in the beginning of a game and what it would look like, leaving out a lot of detail. Then we stuffed the middle with information, now we are turning to look at the gameplay. After the gameplay, we're going to wrap this up with some tips and tricks to aid in increasing your XP and points per hour, as well as some handy things to know if you ever need to get yourself out of a sticky situation or somewhat manipulate the game in your favor. What you've been watching on the screen is an example of Start A, where you enter the room fresh, grab your cells, grab your empty cells, head down to the mine and then head back to the table to craft and get ready to craft before the first portal. Now we transition over to Start B. This is the west mine if you had caught the portal at the end of the last round. You'll mine, fill up your pouches till they're entirely full, and then leave using the portal that's just to the east. You'll run across the map to the east mine, head down, and here you will continue to mine the fragments until the two minute preparation round has completed. In this case, since your inventory is already full of essence, you have an opportunity once the two minute preparation round begins. If the first rotation of altars isn't desirable to you, you can wait until the second rotation after 18 seconds. By that point you will need to leave. Usually to be safe to give myself enough time to meet the first portal, I will leave with 4 seconds remaining of the first rotation, that way it gives my character time to climb the slope and head towards the center. While you continue to watch, I think it's tangent time. It's a good time to explain what the purpose of the cells are. We briefly touched on it before, but the cells and your decision making process early on is very important. The blood, fire, and death are all overcharged cells. You want to use those if you can. So in the first rotation, if you see the death altar and the air altar, it's preferable to go to the death altar. Even if you just started and you're full of binding necklaces, it's better to get that overcharged cell. You'll get more experience, create stronger guardians as well as stronger barriers, which gives you a better chance at making sure that the guardian in the center doesn't die and the game doesn't end. It's understandable in your first few games while you're learning to forget or to not want to use your charged cells. However, over the course of an entire game, using a cell every chance you can will equate to almost two full trips of crafting essence into guardian stones. Now, let's talk about the point system. The point system works in hundreds. Every hundred points equals one reward point, and that point is now secure. For sub hundredth points, such as 375, you would earn 3 reward points and have a 75% chance, because of the 75 after the 3, at receiving an additional reward point. In order to loot the chest, it requires 100 elemental and 100 catalytic points, which equal 1 loot from the rewards guardian. 
points can be stacked in one type, which we'll talk about in the next section. So you can have 20 points in elemental and zero in catalytic, and then do your catalytics at another time. Combination runes offer the best points. They're 50% more points. Your regular guardian stones give you two, and your combination guardian stones will give you three. And lastly, with regards to the point system, you can have a total of 1200 points per game, which is 12 points in rewards, and a maximum of 1000 points in one type. Now to the part of the video that everybody has been waiting for, and that is the tips and the tricks. First off, we have the South Portal Jumper. If it's a South Portal and you're in the far end of the map, so the North End, you can enter an altar if there's one near you, for example, the Nature Altar, the Fire Altar, or the Law Altar. Once you enter that, you can immediately leave through that portal and you'll return to the returning portal that is by the workbench and therefore is only three tiles away from where the south portal to the west mine would be located. Next, using charged cells to round up your points. As mentioned earlier in the guide, respectively leaves a catalytic and elemental guardian by the workbench. Use a charged cell on respective guardian pile, catalytic or elemental to round up your points. So if you're at 375, give yourself a higher chance of hitting that 100th threshold. Stacking Elemental Stack your elemental points in the beginning of the game. Since you will have 3 to 4 binding necklaces, only do elemental to free up inventory slots, and then do your catalytic. Toggling your talismans If you find your lower level talismans annoying, you can right click the altar entrance and toggle to not receive them. I don't do this personally as I will just drop them sometimes, as I like having the option to enter the air altar or other useful altars at certain times. In continuation of the above, let's talk about short trip altars. If you find yourself in a pinch for time, let's say the portal into the west mine is already active, use an altar that is close to the portal. For example, the air, water, body, blood, although bloods are furthest from the workbench, so keep that in mind, you can shave off around three to five seconds. Avoid using cosmic, fire, or mind in these situations. Next, the late start. If you enter the room late, after resupplying at the bank or looting, stay in the east mine until the first portal to the west mine appears. This is useful when you miss a minute or more of the prep route. Know your timing. Keep a conscious understanding of how long it takes you to do things like climbing the slope, running to the benches from the far end, and how long it'll take you to craft combo runes. Some are faster than others. You need to be able to judge and skip crafts if necessary to reach a portal. Inventory and pouches plus three. If you're using start A, you will use the workbenches and fragments three times. And if you're doing start B, you will use them two times. So you can plan accordingly to mine fragments for the amount of workbench rounds you will have. If you have extra time, it doesn't hurt in the event that the round is extended due to low play account or damage to the guardian to have extra fragments. But if you are pressed for time, know your inventory and pouch quantity and multiply by two or three respectively for the start that you have. A conclusion and things we didn't cover. We didn't cover the rewards in detail or the drop rates. These can both be found on the wiki in much better detail than wasting time during a guide to go through each one one by one. The guide would be much longer and less more desirable for people to watch it. So go to the wiki, you can pull up the charts and you can see for each item that is given you during the game what its benefits are and you can see the drop rate related to the item. There's also a couple other intricacies that you'll pick up during your flow. If you rewatch the guide after doing probably 10 to 15 different games, you'll start to pick things up. As I said, this guide was kind of created as a sandwich format where we did a little one at the beginning as the bottom bun, and then we did a lot of the information in the center, and then we looked at a game again in the end. So if after you've completed around 10 to 15 games, it might be good to come back to the guide, especially the tips and the tricks and some of the graphics as well with the lines showing the maps and the coordinations and the routes. These will be probably be a lot more easier for you to understand after you've done a couple and you're familiar with the mind, the direction, the altars, so on and so forth. Hopefully you found this guide useful and appreciate the detail that went into the middle sections. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you found the guide helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you want to reach out to me directly, which might be a little quicker, you can hit the link below for the Discord and just at textbook, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I appreciate everyone tolerating my variations in the voice. I've been sick for the last four weeks, which has made recording very, very difficult, but I think I've done my best to make it as uniform as possible. Thanks again, and we'll see you later.